Part two of Retro Weekend and both the Sheffield Steelers and Guildford Flames come into it on the back of home wins yesterday. Both teams are trying to catch the Belfast Giants and the victor here will be best placed to try and reel them in. Martin Latal is a late scratch, Thomas Petule returns in his place. Guildford are missing Logan Fredericks and Bradley Lalonde and they start Eamon McAdam in goal. Here's Mosey. Drops it back, then sent across towards Newman. He was tracked by Lakovic and he couldn't quite get the shot away. And then the Steelers make a mess of the one-timer effort. And then a collision inadvertently involving Petgrave has taken him out of the play. And the Flames rush through to the slot and score. It's Tedesco again here at the Utilitar Arena. The inadvertent collision in neutral ice between Petgrave and the Guildford Flame took him out of the play. The Steelers did not have enough players back to get into Desco's way. And he's able to beat the blocker of Greenfield. The opening goal that silences the home crowd. It's an unassisted goal for Daniel Tedesco. It is his 33rd goal of the season. Flames and Steelers have identical penalty killing records this season. And about 82.5% across the Via Play Elite League campaign so far. Newman back to the point Nakarin shifts it across Petgrave will shoot and a little touch from McAdam turn it away Ciampini Petgrave it's Christo back for Akron and Petgrave and Akron sends it towards goal rebound it's there it's Newman McAdam couldn't hold it, and Newman couldn't miss. The Steelers strike straight back with a power play goal to level the game. McAdam not able to deal with the shot that came in from Akron, and Newman was Johnny on the spot. Twenty-three on the season for Brett Newman. Here's O'Connor. Right hit the long pass through the middle. Petgrave was waiting for it, and then Petgrave had his stick tied up. Did well to recover. Prevent the Flames bursting in behind. Here's Markland. Well, not the stick out of Petgrave's hand. Back to the point. O'Connor's shot. It got all the way through. Greenfield beaten by the screen in front of him. And it's O'Connor who receives the congratulations. Long range shot. It did bounce off somebody in front, may have hit Mosey. But it is O'Connor who sent it goalwards and accepts the applause from the away supporters. Guildford retake the lead inside the first period. Reflection did happen. Oh, that's a good hit from O'Connor sitting down Petule. And there's a penalty called on the retaliation. Flames are going to get a power play here. And meanwhile, McAdam's gone to the bench for the extra skater. The whistle will go as Neverline and touches the puck. And the Flames in front in the game. And now an extra player for the next two minutes. It's McNally who serves the penalty. And the original hit came in from O'Connor on Petule. It's either 14 stepping up, landing the hit. And then McNally with a cross check on O'Connor settled himself a little bit trapped O'Connor switches it across to the far side Tedesco settles it down still 45 seconds left for Guildford O'Connor quick shot saved and not held by Greenfield and it's got through a messy scramble around the Steelers' crease and Guildford have doubled their advantage. It's a third first period goal for the visitors. And Greenfield with the shot that got past the glove and hit off his helmet. Markland had a whack at it. Tedesco just able to feed it inside the post. And the Flames go 3-1 in front. 
confirmed as Tedesco's goal, his second of the night, 34th of the season. Does this go to O'Connor and Markland, 26 from 14 and 20. Puck out into the slot, shot blocked, Connolly sent it goalwards but it never reached the netminder. Dowd. Thought about a pass but decided against it. Oh, what a goal from Robert Dowd! He's taking it upon himself to get the Steelers back into this one. He had the puck in the neutral zone, he looked left, he looked right, and he decided to skate through the middle. That's a terrific finish over the shoulder. Robert Dowd does it all by himself, and it's back to a one-goal game again. Now here's Schultz, across the far side, but fanned on by Valorand. Switched across to Connolly, back to Schultz. Valorand again, Dowd and Allen, also out there for the Steelers. Here is Allen, tried the little cheeky backhand, tried to put it in off the back of McAdam, didn't work out, Valorand. Now Valorand's got room, he can walk it in and score! The Flames just lost track of Marco Valorand. And he finally finds his range. That's another excellent finish from the Steelers. This is a terrifically entertaining game. It's 3-3, and we're not even halfway through it. Steelers' power play is coming up big. Two for two. And it's Marco Valorand's sixth goal of the season. Lock that got his body in the way. Akrad moves inside. There's the blast. Follow up. Oh, what a save, McAdam. Back to five on four. Akrad saved again. Rebound. It's somehow not got in. How on earth have the Steelers not scored? So this was the five on four play. And that's McAdam with the save to deny Champini. And then Akrad come off the post or off McAdam that one was certainly McAdam once and then twice it was McAdam and then it swept away from in the crease here's Tedesco oh he was tripped and Tate is denied by Greenfield Steelers will touch the puck and the whistle will go and with 16 seconds to go in the period both sides are asking why penalties haven't been called one finally has been called here on Akrad, taking down Tedesco. Yep. His team are on the power play here for the final 16 seconds of the second period. Important moment in this game, and the Steelers get through to the intermission. Thanks to the blocker save, they can't on the follow-up. Six seconds to go in the period. And Guildford make the power play count. Greenfield with the first save, but he couldn't recover and get back. He was able to block Tedesco's shot, but not the one that came in immediately afterwards from Ryan Tate. A hammer blow for the Steelers. They find themselves behind again. So it's announced as Tate assisted Markland and Ferguson. Flames come bursting forward. And here's an opportunity which is shot wide by McNulty. Cable. McNulty again. Steelers get onto this one, but there's a penalty call behind the play. And that is pretty catastrophic for the Steelers' chances in this one. Petgrave cannot believe that that one's gone against him. A little bit of a shove with a stick up high. Officials have called that as a penalty. And the power play coming, and you can hear what Matt Petgrave thinks of it. Can they find another one here? There's a minute of penalty left to kill. David Phillips plays the pass rather than dumping the puck. Angle is tight, safe made, rebound, they have scored, Sean Hadden, it's Allen, 
He's done it before and he's doing it again. The Steelers decided not to dump the puck because they knew they needed a goal. And Allen is there to provide it. 4-4 shorthanded. What a moment in this game. Maybe what a moment in the title race. It was Ciampini who received the puck from David Phillips that took the initial shot. And McAdam saved it. But he couldn't quite locate the puck quickly enough. And Allen slams it in. O'Connor. Guilford still pressing, they're waiting for the right time. And they get it into a key shooting position. Oh, there's another penalty, the Steelers have committed another one. Right in front, I think someone's guilty of a cross-check. That's a vital block, oh, and now the Steelers are down an injured player and the play will have to be stopped. It was the block from David Phillips on Ryan Tate's shot, but there was a penalty in the Monks, the middle of all that. It's a really sore one for David Phillips. But the Steelers are going to be short-handed. So that was the slashing penalty that Allen is currently in the box for. There's not really an awful lot to it. You can see why the official called it. So whether the two points come in regulation or overtime doesn't really matter too much. But it will be two points for one of these teams in overtime or a shootout. This game has finished 4-4 through 60 minutes. And it's the short-handed goal of Scott Allen that has got the Steelers there. But he will start overtime in the penalty box for another 24 seconds. So it'll be four on three. Head to head, literally at the face-off. And Guilford able to win it. And the puck is with O'Connor. Tedesco Ferguson Tedesco here's O'Connor last couple of seconds of power play time Tate O'Connor shoots it's blocked and then again and it's wide and it's swept in Guilford win it it's Brett Ferguson The overtime decider. The Steelers killed the penalty, but Ferguson had just enough reach to get onto it and turn it behind Greenfield for the game-winning goal 30 seconds into overtime. Four on four overtime, sudden death winner. And it means that the Guildford Flames move on to 74 points. The Steelers... On to 73, and Guildford have a game in hand on both the Steelers and the Giants. A dramatic short-handed goal from Scott Allen took the game to overtime, but the Steelers were not able to claim both points. Just a single one for their efforts tonight, and what an effort it was. They battled hard against an excellent flame side. Aaron, I don't think you could have asked any more from your team tonight, could you? Yeah, I mean, tonight we played a very, very good hockey game. Um, disappointed with the result, obviously, but guys left it out there. Played with emotion, desperation all night long. Um, you know, a couple bounces that don't go our way. We block a shot there. Nobody knows where that puck ends up. Ends up on their tape twice tonight. Pucks are rolling around the crease for us on the power play. We scored two power play goals tonight, but... You know, and we can't find a way to whack them home, and, and that was kind of the difference tonight. Um, credit to Guilford, they're a very good hockey team. They're fast, excellent in transition, dangerous uh, at all times. Um, they've had an unbelievable year this year, you know, um, but, you know, disappointed that we, we didn't get both points. When Scotty Allen got that short-handed one, the building was alive, we had the momentum. Did you feel it was then going to go our way? Yeah, I did. I mean, we still had to kill a penalty, um, finish that k kill off, and then we take another one in overtime. I watched it back. Like, that is, is about as soft as you can get, and especially in overtime like that when you're already down. But, you know, that was the way the refing was tonight. That's the way it is.
Yeah. Daniel Champini was a major part of that short handed goal, and he had another good night. Champini was excellent again tonight. He's on a nice run here. Last six to eight games, he's been outstanding. You know, he had that three games where he missed because he was really, really sick. It's taken a little while to get back to form, but he's been quality. Yeah. Cardiff take over the two points. Belfast get a point. Your situation now in the league standings, is it over as far as the title and is it now a battle for second? Yeah, I mean, the reality is is you're, what, six points back with four to play. Mathematically, there's a chance. Not a very good one, obviously. You need a ton of help from a very good hockey team that has, isn't going to go on that kind of run, probably. Um, we got to focus on Friday. You know, we can cut that to four, you know, and then maybe get some more help. But it, like you said, it's, it's unlikely. Um, but we gotta we gotta maintain our focus here. We play two very good hockey teams next week. Gotta show some pride here and and um, be ready to play for that seating. It's going to be very important too. Yeah. Just finally a word on the fans over fourteen and a half thousand this weekend. Incredible. Unbelievable. Yeah. It was it was nice to for them to see a really good hockey game um, tonight. Up and down. Some goals. I think I'd have probably preferred a two one win if I'm fully on a boring two one win tonight. But. Um, they were they were outstanding all week, you know, the Wednesday and then the Saturday, Sunday here. You know, we got a big win for them yesterday against Nottingham to go 6-0 and against them on the season, which was huge. Um, would love that extra point tonight, so a little disappointed. Paul, that was a very intense and very entertaining game of hockey. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think take nothing away from both sides. I thought that was a real, real good game of hockey. Both teams played very well, um, you know, from a Guildford standpoint. You like to get them two points. Um, but overall, very happy with our compete level coming in here again. Um, and, you know, if you look at this series, obviously the three at home and three away, it's, uh, we've turned the table on that. Um, I touched on it before this game tonight. We had to draw confidence from being in here twice already and winning both of those games. And um, we, kept that, uh, we kept that routine again here tonight. But, um, you know, from our standpoint, we've got it again. We've got to make sure that we take the positives out of this game. We have Coventry on Wednesday night, which is uh, it's a huge game for us. Your power play came to the fore as it did late on last night. It wasn't a power play goal right at the end, but it may as well have been. Yeah, it's it, it's funny, isn't it? Because you know you work so hard, both uh, power play and penalty killing, and you know we often say that those are the moments that win you the game, whether you kill the penalty or whether you score on the power play. And to be fair, the last maybe two three weeks, our power play hasn't been great. Um, we've worked on it a little bit harder, and we got the reward from that tonight. There was a short-handed goal you conceded towards the end, which could have been a killer, but you called a timeout straight afterwards. What was you thinking there? Yeah, it was just obviously, just, you know, again, you're in, you're in a cauldron in here and we know how you know, how, it in, how intense it is and you've just give up that goal and then the, the building's absolutely, you know, it's fallen down. So it was just important for us to uh, keep our calm because we were still on the power play. I think we still had 40 seconds left. So it was, uh, it was just about regrouping and then uh, calming ourselves down and then trying to go out there and execute for the remainder of that penalty that was left. You've seen the results over in Belfast tonight. They've picked up one point. How do you see the state of the title race with just a handful to go? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think there's, you know, there's, there's always uh, there's turns along the way. Um, and I've said it all along. You know, it's obviously there's four teams still very much in this, I believe. Um, but again, we have to just worry about ourselves. Like I said, we've, we've got a tough game uh, Wednesday night in Coventry and we have to enjoy tonight, take all the positives out of this weekend, four-point weekend, which we haven't had in a while, and then uh, move forward for ourselves for Wednesday.